There is nothing so powerful as truth, and often nothing so strange. Daniel Webster. When writing or researching, it's important to understand what we're learning about to the fullest, which is why we must choose our sources wisely, which is exactly what we'll teach you how to do today. I'm Bree, and I'll be your guide. Welcome to the Scholarly Cheese Guild. What is a source? According to Merriam-Webster, a source is a person or publication that supplies information. For example, if your grandfather tells you a story from his youth, he is your source as to whether or not that story is true. There are three main types of sources, those being primary, secondary, and tertiary. A primary source is an original document or object that was written or made at the time that you're studying. For example, if you're studying fashion from 1852, a primary source could be a dress that was made in 1852. These are different from secondary sources, which are usually books or articles that analyze and retell events from the past. An example of this is a book about World War II. And finally, tertiary sources provide context or background to primary or secondary sources. These sources would include bibliographies. So now that we know what the different types of sources are, we need to know how to use them. One good way to make sure that you're choosing sources wisely is by using a priority list. This priority list consists of first-hand documents, scholarly papers, and reputable sources. First-hand documents are essentially your primary sources. It's a document written in the moment or by a person who was at the event. For example, you should cite the Constitution as opposed to a book about the Constitution. After going through your primary sor sources or first-hand documents, you can move on to your secondary sources. These are papers or articles that have been written for academic purposes and have citations and have been peer reviewed. And then finally, you can go to your reputable sources. These are sources that have good reputations in terms of being historically accurate. Some good reputable sources to get you started are Encyclopedia Britannica and Smithsonian. Some sources to be careful of when researching are blogs and biased sources. How do we know if a source is biased? Well, if there are multiple accounts of the same event, and one colors the event way differently than the others, the source is almost always biased. For example, there are some papers written about a meeting between Thomas Jefferson and Lafayette at Monticello. There was one paper written by a woman who described others' appearances as horrible and basically just painted a lot of perfectly fine people in a bad light. Now, the thing that makes this source biased is the fact that every other paper written about the event described them as lovely people with good appearances. So basically, just look out for the source that doesn't quite match up with the others. Also, as a side note, never cite Wikipedia. While Wikipedia does have good information on it and can be good to get an overview of stuff, it is open for people to change things on it and can harbor misinformation. If you want to see if something on Wikipedia is true or cite something from it, simply scroll down to the bottom of the page where the citations are and check out the corresponding citation. Once you've cleared that source is okay, feel free to cite the fact. Just do it from the original source and not from Wikipedia. <laughs> I just flew in from Guam and you don't want to know what happened there. Now, let's think. Her segment rolls on. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I roll my eyes out loud? You'll have to excuse me. It's just that her segment seems to get more and more boring. And I didn't even think that was possible. I believe this has been repeated many times. It's quite redundant, really. <coughs> Anyways. How about a more interesting story, hmm? Aha! Well, I'll tell you about the time the famous leader, Napoleon Bonaparte, was attacked by a ferociously adorable buttons. You see, Napoleon wanted to go on a rabbit hunt, but instead of hunting, yeah, regular rabbits, he had some rabbits be put in some cages until the hunt started. Uh, however, when the sharp clawed fuzzballs were released, they charged forward. Da -da 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 -da. Now, the hunted party was met by an onslaught of red-eyed cuteness. 
uh, somewhat reminiscent of the Killer Bunny from Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Good stuff. That's one jacked fact. I'll see you tomorrow. Or maybe not. Um, did Jack verify that? Oh. Please take everything Jack says with a grain of salt and make sure to verify his facts. It's important to choose our sources wisely because we want to seek truth in all situations. If we don't, it can create misunderstandings and cause resentment. So I hope this video helps you in your research to seek the truth and learn. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you on the next quest.